Hello and welcome to another episode of Death by Bungie. The quest for the successor to Bungie continues, of course. That's what this video is about. It's an opportunity for me to look at yet another crossbow manufacturer and see if it fits the bill. See if it's got some features I like or features I don't like. See if it's got enough features that I like, though, for me to go try it out in person. See if it fits me good and see if possibly, just possibly, it can be the perfect crossbow for me to take into the woods for this upcoming crossbow season. 10 point crossbows. I won't say this is the most requested brand, but the people who have suggested 10 point to me were very persistent. Not as many people, but very persistent nonetheless. So we are going to 10pointcrossbows.com, a perfectly named crossbow website. I love that. And we see right up off the bat, meet the 2021 10 point crossbows lineup. Well, that is why I am here. What I've been doing in these videos is looking kind of at like what their flagship is, their biggest deal, right? Their most expensive crossbow, maybe, maybe not, but their most popular model, their biggest model, the one that they put out there first, right? Or a new model, something like that. So I can get a feel for that crossbow manufacturer. I'm going to do that here. I'm just going to go through and get a feel for what they offer. Because I honestly will tell you right now, I don't know anything about 10 point whatsoever. Whatsoever. I have had the distinct honor of hunting with a friend of Bungie who used a 10 point crossbow at our first ever Death by Bungie meet and greet. He was successful with a big old hog, and uh, we had a great conversation that afternoon. I really, really enjoyed meeting Ron at that event. But he actually did a great interview about his 10 point crossbow if you want to go back and watch that. He's got some criticisms of it, but also things that he liked about it. Um, the literature says with those bolts, I should get 365, but it's not surprising to see it. Just a little bit under, but that's okay. A couple things we see here. We do have the Garmin Zero on here, or X Zero, whatever it is. It's like Hero with an X. I don't know. But the Garmin Zero, you're going to hear more and more about that scope, that as time goes by. That's a popular item, very expensive item, but it's not something necessarily I'm into, but you're going to hear more about that. And maybe we'll talk about that in this video. Shorter, faster, never felt better. We're back with the shorter. What is up with that? Was there a poll taken of crossbow hunters where they asked us whether we wanted shorter crossbows? Like, was that the a thing that we asked for? I don't know. But more and more manufacturers pushing the shorter crossbows. They're really pushing the limits of the shorter crossbows. And here we see a tape measure just to verify its accuracy, 26.5 inches. For those of you who are in the standard measuring system like me, 26.5 is 26 and a half inches. Really, when you talk about inches, it's supposed to be fractions, right? We don't do decimals. That's not the, what we do here, but whatever. That's what we have. We see on this first picture, the broadhead protruding out past the end of the riser, out past the little feet. It looks like those are little feet that are used to protect the front of the crossbow. Looks like there might be a stirrup in there as well. That is an interesting broadhead. I'm not familiar with that one, but it is a rear deploying broadhead. That's the style I like. Boy, does that stick out a long way past the end of the crossbow. And interestingly enough, something catches my eye right off the bat on this. What is the deal with that? Look at that scope. Look at it. Would you look at that? Well, Would you look at that? You just got to look at it. Just car, look at it. Car is look at that scope. How cool is that? The scope is camo. Huh. Of all the ones we've looked at here, I don't think I have seen a camouflaged scope. I have not looked at this website in advance, by the way. This is the first time I've looked at this website. But that is pretty cool. Okay, so that one, we've got a range-finding scope. They're really pushing the scope. That's like the top thing on their website along with the Havoc RS440, new for 2021. Well, that's an interesting one to look at. We will go look at that one, I guess. Fastest compact crossbows ever, Havoc 440, and then the Siege RS410, seven and a half inches axle to axle. Wow, you have arrived when you have a crossbow that is that narrow. That is amazing. Well, let's look at this crossbow. Let's, let's tap on that bad boy. New for 2021, we should be able to look at that. I'm going to click on buy now. I hope that doesn't link right up with my PayPal and start taking money out of my account. Whew, it didn't. 
okay, we're gonna be all right here. I gotta save money for whatever crossbow it is that I'm gonna buy. Someone commented recently that we're getting these stimulus checks supposedly for like 1300 bucks, and that was it just a coincidence that the Killer Instinct X1 cost $1,300? Hmm. <laughs> I just thought that was interesting. It's kind of a funny comment. So what we've got here, we've got a the Havoc RS440 X Eero. <laughs> the Havoc RS440 Zero with the Garmin Range Finding Crossbow Scope. I can tell you right now that this crossbow is going to cost in excess of $1,500 because that scope alone is like $1,500. But I've been hearing some good things about it, interesting things. I've heard people from the company do podcasts. I've listened to that. But nonetheless, an interesting piece of equipment that scope is. I want to point out, too, if you look at that picture, we see how from that big old piece of technology up front, which is weatherproof, by the way. It's, an, it's a weatherproof design, but it has a little wire coming off of it going down here. Now, I'm not a big fan of extra wires and all that fun stuff. That just seems like something else that can break and go wrong. Also, I'm not a fan of having to reach up there and push those buttons that you see right there. I can imagine as I'm getting ready to take a shot before I can even line up my reticles, my scope, before I can even aim or look at the animal and get a feel for what I'm doing here, I have to reach up and figure out which of these three buttons I have to push in order to range find that animal, in order to put the bead on it so that that scope, what that will do after I push the button, it will range find what I'm pointing the scope at and then it will adjust the picture in the viewfinder so that my 20-yard reticle, my only pin, so to speak, the center dot, is right on at the right distance. Okay, so if it's 47 yards, it's going to line it up for 47 yards, not 20, but 47. Kind of cool, okay? It's like the HHA optimizer, but digital. However, I'm not a fan of having to reach up there and press one of those buttons before I can start taking shots. This scope kind of makes my crossbow method of looking through the scope and at the various reticles and memorizing the yardages before the deer comes in or what have you, getting a feel for yardages, feeling comfortable 20 versus 30 yards, that sort of thing. That's my style. And this takes that away. But my style is still, to me at least, more efficient because I got all that stuff memorized and I'm not moving my hands around trying to figure stuff out in the heat of the moment. My numbers, my yardages are already predetermined. And all I got to do is line it up and take that shot. So that's that's my thinking. But I do want to point out that this little cable going off of here actually helps alleviate that concern because it comes down. There's a little button that they can mount on the side of your crossbow. So now the trigger of the scope button, not the trigger, but this trigger, the thing that triggers that range finding process can actually be mounted right where your thumb is or somewhere more convenient. And that's kind of nice. So if you buy one of these, it can come configured with that already installed. That's pretty cool. This is crossbow technology moving forward. It's alleviating problems that some people have with range finding. It makes people shoot deer better. This can help fix the problems that people had with accuracy based on distance. That's There's some good to that, right? I really like the open butt of the stock where you get your hand in there and carry that bad boy around. Interestingly too, these crossbows now are getting so short. And this goes for Genevieve's crossbow, Bungie Jr. She shot her doe in Maryland. She dragged that out. I carried her crossbow out. And I was amazed at the difference. Whereas when I carry my crossbow, I have to put it over my shoulder. Or if I carry it down, I got to hold it up. And my arm's almost bent at a 90 degree angle to keep it from hitting the ground. Because it's 30 some inches long, my crossbow is. Her crossbow is so short that me, I'm about six feet, a little over six feet tall. Me walking with that crossbow, I could actually carry it by the stirrup. And with my arms extended, it barely, if at all, touched the ground. But these crossbows are probably shorter than the ones we're looking at today, 26 and a half inches, just over two feet long. You can carry it by the butt of the stock here and just carry it along and won't even hit the ground with it. That's pretty cool. That's the long way of saying that's pretty cool. It does look as though we have a built-in crank. This is something that I would be interested in. I would be more interested in a crossbow that shoots 440 feet per second that I didn't have to cock with a crank, right? But 
you can't have it all maybe. There's trade-offs in everything that we do. So that's just something we gotta be aware of. But it looks like that's just on there and you can throw your uh, cranking handle on there, crank your crossbow up, cock it and all that. And it does say decock on there. That's pretty cool. That's telling me that I can cock or uncock the crossbow using the crank, a built-in crank system. Gotta go with a crank. It'd be nice to have a crank that's built in, assuming it doesn't ruin the balance, assuming it's not too heavy. It'd be nice to have it built in so you don't have to worry about going to find the thing and worry about forgetting it and all that. The safety, now this is one of those, I'm thinking that this is the safety here, and that looks to be one thing that I didn't comment on when I was talking about safeties in the last video, and thank you so much for the comments that I got because I had questions in that last video that I did. This is gonna be like two videos ago, but when I did the video on the killer instincts, that video just came out, and I had a handful of, as of right now, that I'm when I'm recording this video, but. By the time you hear this video, there'll be two more videos out probably, <laughs> okay, if that makes any sense. But when I look at this, these safeties, when I was talking about that, one thing that I didn't comment on is I want to get away from the rifle style grip, right, to the get into the pistol style grip. That's more comfortable. But what I'm losing by doing that is the fact that my hand and thumb is right normally next to the hammer right next to the safety on my old crossbow. And by losing, by shifting your hand under it, you're losing that. Now my hand's gonna have to go somewhere else in the presence of the deer, in the presence of the animal. My hand is gonna have to go somewhere else for me to find that safety. Now at least these safeties look like they stick out well enough to where I'll be able to get my thumb on there, turn them on and off, that sort of thing. So that's, that's a factor in this discussion for sure. This does have that very sharp angle on the string when cocked, but I was told by friends of Bungie that there's they don't see an increase in serving wear. Many of the people that commented said that anyway. Overall, that seemed to be the comments and the feedback that I got, that people did not see an increase in serving wear based on that steep angle. In fact, some people were telling me they had what they described at least was better serving wear with the killer instinct. I'm still going back to the comments that I've got this morning and yesterday on that video, so forgive me on that. But specifically with regard to those killer instincts, the folks that are shooting the SWAT XP with a very steep angle on the string like this is when it's cocked, the folks that shoot those were telling me that they're, generally speaking, their servings weren't too, too bad. They aren't getting chewed up too much. Part of that though, that crossbow has a 50% let off, 200 pound draw weight, I think something like that. So that's going to reduce the amount of wear because there's less tension and stress on that serving. With this one, I think because we have no rope cocking, it looks like we've got a built-in crank. That tells me that this is not something you want to cock with a rope. We've got a nice shooting reel with a crossbow arrow sitting right on here, all loaded up, ready to go. It's a good looking overall design. Here's a picture of that. And more of this video is gonna be about this scope. It is part of this crossbow and it is something, it's a piece of crossbow equipment that people might wanna know about. But this is what it looks like, okay? You got your real nice big buck out there and it's giving you a dot where to shoot. The angle on here, I think that has to do with canting. Those two little arrows are telling us that we're canting the crossbow. In other words, you might wanna lift your crossbow up a little bit like this in order to get a more accurate shot. This crossbow, Technically though, if the scope is doing all this math and it's able to tell you the elevation, then it should be able to factor in the difference in windage as well due to canting. If it has a built-in level telling me that it's canting, then why can't it also tell me, why, why even tell me that? Why not just fix the dot, put the dot where the dot needs to be, move the crossbow over, I don't know. We're getting to the point where the crossbow is going to shoot the deer for you without you pulling the trigger. I mean, there'll probably be a setting, pull the trigger automatically when I'm aiming, okay? I don't know. It seems like that's what we're dealing with here, but pretty neat. You got some information on there that is a, a neat little system. But what do we got for this crossbow? We have an elevated custom cheek piece. Okay, so that that's already raised up. It does not look like it has adjustability built into it. It's got, it looks like it's pretty much screwed down there, pretty much screwed fast. That was a complaint by our friend of Bungie, Ron, who shoots the 10 point. He commented on how he was a little disappointed with the amount of adjustability that it had for a high-end crossbow. Now he's not talking about this model, but nonetheless, that is a concern that he raised as well. AccuSlide cocking and decocking system. That's a good design. People have commented on that. People sent me messages. 
Two-stage Trigger Zero Creep design features a roller gear system that sets a new standard in high performance crossbow accuracy. I would have to try this and shoot it whether to see whether I like a trigger. I can't take their word for it on something like that. I'm not that picky, but maybe I should be. To be honest with you, I've shot various crossbows and I've never even paid attention to the trigger. So I think if I get used to a new crossbow, I will be used to the trigger and it won't be a problem. The micro track barrel. Now here we're not talking about a barrel, a tube like Killer Instinct. Here we are talking about a more traditional crossbow shooting rail with a flight groove, the whole bit. Reduces string to rail contact by an incredible 50%, leading to an increased accuracy and provides string life in excess of a thousand shots. Okay, so I take back what I said. It is not a traditional rail. <laughs> I was wrong about that. It is. It does appear to be one, but I'm betting that this is hollowed out and we have rollers or some other method of keeping that it's a micro track barrel. So some kind of track for this arrow to go on, but it's got less surface area and that's what's reducing the string wear, I'm betting. Here we do have that stirrup out front that's pretty nice, so we don't have to worry too much about that, I don't think. I don't think that's gonna be a problem. Holy cow! Oh, $3,649.99. If I were on the price is right, I would have been the lowest bidder, I am sure. That takes the cake, but $3,649, again, I think $1,500 of that plus is the scope, and the fact that that scope is affixed to this, but wired into this crossbow. So there's some, you know, this, you get what you pay for, maybe. You know, this is a lot of crossbow, but a lot of technology for a lot of money. That's what this is. So that is, I can tell you right now, outside of my price range, especially given that I am not personally interested in the scope. This would require me to change my style. If I were brand new to crossbow hunting and I had this kind of money, maybe that's suitable because I could just adopt it as my new crossbow style, right? Or if my old crossbow style were, was not working, then maybe I would switch crossbow styles and I would look at this as a new crossbow style. Not something I'm really interested in. So perhaps, perhaps we have just wasted everyone's time in me looking at this crossbow. Let's look at accessories. Got a case, comes with EVO X center punch broadheads. You can fix the broadheads. These are the center punch arrows. I wonder if these are the arrows that go with it. The lighted knock ones. Let's see if they got specs for these. They do have the shield style veins. I like that. That's pretty fancy. That shield style, you can see how the fletchings there are sort of carved out. They make like a little shield on here. Pretty neat, pretty neat. Let's tap on that. The lighted knocks, these are EVOX lighted center punch 16. 16 inch arrows, 400 grains. Interesting too, and I heard a podcast about this recently where they're talking about the length of the arrows. They actually had better accuracy and penetration with 16 inch arrows than they did with the longer arrows. And listening to the podcast that I listened to, they're very proud of these arrows and there was a lot of testing that went into it before they decided to go with the 16 inch arrow. But man, look at that crossbow. That arrow sticks out a long ways on the front end of that crossbow and it's only a 16 inch arrow. Wow. That's not a very big crossbow. Wow. Well, I hope I have not completely wasted everyone's time by looking at the wrong model. I know that there are a number of other models that people suggested, but I can't look at all of them. I just don't, there's no way I can do that many videos. My voice will not hold up for that many videos. But I can tell you that if we are to very quickly take that number, right? Those are 400 grainers. And I'm assuming that that 400 grains includes a 100 grain field point. We're gonna up that weight to 450 grains. That's gonna drop our speed from that 440. We're gonna put that down to 425, and we're gonna hit the generate energy and momentum, and kaboom, it mooses. Nobody's surprised by that. Once again, we are not surprised. But wow, I am surprised at the numbers. The 180, that's a lot of foot pounds of kinetic energy, but more important to me, when you look at these numbers, holy cow, 0.849 slugs. 0.849 pieces of momentum, right? That's what that is. But 0.849, this is a scale that's measured in thousandths. So it, does, it takes a lot to get some movement on here, okay? And that movement comes in one of two ways. It comes from either more speed or more weight, right? And 
when we're at 0.849, most of the crossbows that we have looked at are in the 0.7s. Bungee is in the 0.5s, right? To go to 0.849 out of the box with my broadhead of choice, using their stock arrows with my broadhead of choice, 0.849, that's pretty impressive. I'm gonna end this video in the same way that I did the Killer Instinct one, and I didn't mention this, but when I got done looking at the Killer Instinct video, and especially when I went back and edited it, Killer Instinct went from kind of a consideration for me to, and based on conversations with friends of Bungie too, I can't take that out of the picture, but they went from, kind of an, you know, an interesting crossbow to, wow, this is a real interesting crossbow. And all of a sudden they're on the list of ones that I wanna go try out at a local shop. I can tell you looking at these numbers that I'm kind of in the same ballpark with 10 point. And I say that only because by looking at this, right, I see the lot that I like here. I don't like that crossbow. I'm not gonna buy that crossbow, but I might buy a 10 point. I'm gonna to have to look at them a little more thoroughly as a company. I'll go look at the other models, that sort of thing. Send me your feedback, send me your comments and your emails off deathbybungie.com. Make sure that you sign up for the free Death by Bungie email newsletter on deathbybungie.com. I send out, I try to send out weekly emails with all kinds of extra information and interesting things like trail camera pictures, fun stuff like that. So hopefully you'll sign up for that when you get a chance at deathbybungie.com. Until next time, all hail Bungie.